So hello and welcome along to the next episode of the iPhotography podcast. This is Stephen here. If you've not joined us before, thank you so much uh, for hopping on and listening. If you do enjoy today's episode and any other ones that you've been listening to, please hit the subscribe button or the follow button just so you can kind of keep looking out for more. Uh, so today we've got a wonderful member of our iPhotography community. It's Jean Gilmore we're going to be talking to. Uh, and Jean is a photographer who's based over in Sheffield in the UK in Yorkshire. And Jean, she's a bit of a master of all trades. She does a little bit of portraiture, a little bit of landscapes, city work, urban photography, et cetera. So there's kind of quite a little bit of a variation to her work. But we wanted to talk to her today because um, she seems to be a photographer that, as I say, doesn't necessarily know exactly where she wants to be, but really, really enjoys taking the variety of images. And it's interesting to kind of get her point of view upon, uh, you know, how she's dealt with roadblocks in her photography, kind of creative blocks that we all get and with something we can all relate to. Um, so yeah, we wanted to have a little chat about kind of Jean's journey, really, and hopefully it can kind of spark maybe a little bit of inspiration or something relatable in your own journey, because I think Jean's only started photography maybe most seriously in the past kind of couple of years, but even though she's had a camera in her hand for maybe the past 20 or 30 years, um, I think she'll kind of probably say that she's came to this uh, a little bit later in her life than maybe a lot of other people. But if you see the images and if you're listening to this as a podcast, if you hop over and watch it on YouTube, we'll also put some of the images up on there that we've discussed there. Um, throughout anyway um but either way i'll not hold up any longer we've got gene on the line so we're going to hop straight in and i hope you enjoy the show right, i'll start off then so i would say welcome along gene to uh to the i photography podcast now one of the first things uh, I think is important just to establish kind of who you are, because I appreciate not every single one of our listeners may know who you are, if they're not part of iPhotography, um, I may have not seen your images before, but could you kind of give us a little bit of a backstory about your photography journey from when you first picked up a camera pretty much up until now? Mm, yes. Um, well, it's um, it's a shorter history than most people, I think, on the um, on our, in our group, because I was very late coming to photography. Um, my family were not photographers. I can't remember a camera being in the house at all I was as I was growing up. And um, I didn't really start to take photographs until I, I, I got a Canon Sure Shot, I think it yeah. might have been. And I, I think that was in the early 90s. So already um, I'm sort of in the mid forties. So going up towards my mid forties before I actually um, started taking photographs at all. And I, I loved it. I loved that little camera. And I, I really enjoyed taking photographs on, on holidays. It was particularly about going on holiday and I didn't I don't suppose I took photographs of anything other than holidays until <laughs> the grandchildren uh, were born. And then, of course, you know, I, it just became increasingly, you know, sort of um, part of my thing. You know, I would actually, I, I used to take photographs of them all the time. And um, I didn't get my first DSLR until I retired, which was um, 10 years ago now. Oh, wow. And my husband bought me, Tony bought me um, a DSLR for a retirement present oh. and said, now become a proper photographer ah. which of course I actually didn't because that that camera just has stayed on automatic you know for a number of years after that and um, I did a couple of day courses and um, and I joined eye photography started doing the original um, the original course got to about module number six installed not because I didn't think it was a great course I went around telling everybody it's wonderful this course but oh, then nice. you know you get other things get in the way of it and so the upshot is really I didn't really start on my, my the journey didn't accelerate should I say until um I joined eye photography plus oh wow so that's only been what about 18 months yes yes that's wow true. I mean it, it's lovely though to for you to actually say that you know you, as you say you have maybe started I will say later in life but just at a different point because photography mm -hmm. it, it's not bound by age at all but you know the the quality of your images that that we see kind of week in week out and, and on the YouTube version of this video um, we'll kind of put a few images up of, of yours Jean so people can actually see what we're talking about here 
Um, but it really proves that photography has got no age attached to it. It's not as if, you know, like a, a, in sports, you've got to start at a younger age, et cetera. You know, it's more about the mind, um, you know, that it is about the body, really. I mean, to, to some degree, you need the body to be willing as well when you're kind of stretching and bending. Indeed, yes. <laughs> but on the whole, as you say, you know, it, it, it's something you can kind of start a little bit later in life. And like yourself, we have a lot of members and a lot of people taking courses that are, you know, semi-retired or fully retired because they've got that time you know that opportunity and as you say you know you've also been given a, a wonderful camera is that the same the same camera that you're on now that, that Tony got you uh, no well only because I, I dropped it in Edinburgh Castle and broke it <laughs> and uh, and fortunately the insurance company um, sent me a, a new one so it was a slightly updated version so I've had that, that must be about I think eight years ago, maybe I don't know. Yeah. Not very good at remembering times like that. So, uh, but it, I, I got pretty much the same camera. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's well. Again, it, and it's you know we we were always preaching about how it's you know the kit itself you know or has some bearing upon quality of image, but it's always about the photographer and what they learn. So it's mm -hmm. it's great to know that you know you've you've learned so much even from what eye photography has kind of helped you with as well. But you know just over time, you know that that will help you understand your camera better, uh, et cetera, et cetera. But kind of moving on I mean the, the whole purpose as to why you know I wanted to speak to you on the podcast today was more about talking about kind of creative roadblocks and hurdles because as we were just talking about before we kind of uh, went into our podcast here um, you, you seem to hit a bit of a stumbling block in a way in terms of trying to understand either who you are as a photographer or the direction that you wanted your photography to take but I mean we'll kind of maybe come on to that a little bit more uh, in detail later but well I mean what do you find if anything kind of holds you back from getting and the shots that you really want to take? What, what are those roadblocks that you see in your work? Well, I, I think this was partly what you were talking about, what you picked up on when I made that rather sarcastic comment, which, <laughs> which I apologize, I'm going to have to apologize for. Um, and I, um, I was actually just making a bit of a joke, but the reason for it was really, I'd, I'd always loved taking, um, I mean, the two things I was, I said, landscapes when I went on holiday, in, you know, in beautiful places with nice light, and it was pretty easy. And um, and portraits of my little grandchildren, uh, well, growing up grandchildren. Mm. And um, and I really feel as though neither of those things now I am as good at as I would like to be. Um, and I, I think that because I've I've learned so much better. I used to, I used to think some of my photographs were wonderful, and I look at them now, and they've got a horizon like a ski slope, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, of course, I, I look at them very differently. So, and the, the other thing about the landscapes is that I'm, I'm a bit limited as to how much I can get out now. And, um, and when I do get out, I seem as though I'm taking the same places. I'm very, very lucky living in um, on the fringes of the Peak District. But I have photographed everything within a you know, sort of five mile radius of where I live um, so many times. and. Um, I didn't feel that I was progressing very much with the um, with the landscapes. And as for portraits, I mean, I, I, I don't do portraits at all, really. It was just mm. case it was snaps. Um, and so I was thinking, really, what what do I what do I want to be going forward? I'm not really terribly sure. Yeah, no. And, and it's interesting because I think a lot of people uh, could understand and relate to such a comment because the, you know, we all hit creative roadblocks. I'm exactly the same. You know, there's there's times, especially in the past 12, 18 months during yeah, COVID and, and lockdowns, et cetera, that you just don't want to pick up a camera because you're not either inspired by your surroundings or it's just not your natural area. If you like landscapes and you're stuck in between your four walls for 12 months, then you, as you say, you can't get out and and when you do, you can maybe only go so far, um, you know, for, for restrictions, reasons, etc. And then, you know, you've revisited those sites and time and time again. And I think I, especially I could say with with understanding a little bit more about landscape photography from um, the time that we spent with um, a really, really great landscape photographer, Chris Sale, um, that you can revisit these locations. And if you're revisiting, especially at different times of day, you're almost looking at a completely different landscape itself because how light affects the land and where it falls, et cetera, et cetera, depending upon the conditions, can give you a completely different image that you can shoot almost the exact same composition, but how light affects it is really interesting. It's, it's something that I, um, never really appreciate so much as a lot you know in, in taking landscapes because I like yourself I, I love taking landscape photos 
I don't think mines are the strongest at all in any way, shape or form, but I've understood a lot more about what you have to do to kind of get stronger and better. And I think timing and light is, is probably the two most important things, which they, they are in photography everywhere, but exclusively, uh, or sorry, especially in landscape photography, I've noticed that sometimes having to get up at three o'clock in the morning and go for those lands, um, those sunrises would get you, you know, stronger images or more dynamic images. But I think then that comes down to, you know, how much you can get, give to to the art in a way can you you know get up that early and is it just it's something that just fits in with your lifestyle it doesn't necessarily fit in with mine mm-hmm. um but i think that's where the next level comes to and I, I i wonder if that it depends a little bit upon the types of images you're expecting to take i mean do you have you know do you have images that you want to kind of recreate or something in your mind's eye that you want to get and and you're just not being able to see that through the mm-hmm. camera is that is that the issue um Yes, well, I do have an issue, actually, I think, um, producing what I want to put or telling a story, but I'm, I, that's not quite the landscape. Regarding the landscapes, uh, what you were saying about um, about going to the same place again, and there's a few places that I, I have in mind that I've photographed quite a lot in the past, and I really want to go and and make a better job of those but they tend to be places that are difficult for me to get to as I'm getting older and in this last couple of years my walking I used to really love to walk and I and I, I'm I I'm no I can't walk as far as I used to be able to and I probably can't walk very far at all actually mm. so I'm thinking am I going to be able to get onto that you know that place yeah. and take that view that I really want to take maybe yeah maybe I will I'm not giving up on that Um, So I think there is that with going back and doing better. Um, And one thing I'm hoping, I'm not entirely sure that we're going to be able to do it now, but I'm really hoping that we're going to be able to go to Robin Hood's Bay in in only about two or three weeks. And I can remember being in Robin Hood's Bay um, a few years ago and getting up really early and sort of sitting there and I'd actually got me the tripod. This was before I joined the Plus Group, but I was there with my tripod ready to take a, um, a sunrise. And I couldn't do it at all. I made a really bad job of it. And I would love to go up to be able to do that. And I thought if that would, if I can crack that in a couple of weeks' time and actually take that, that sunrise and perhaps a sunset as well while yeah. I'm there, I would really feel that um I've progressed. I'd be happy about that. Well, that's good. And 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 going in little steps like that is fantastic because yeah if you if you're not able to get to the, the big landscapes at the, the time mm-hmm. and the places that you want then it, you just have to adapt I, I think you know photography mm-hmm. about any art is adaptation upon you know how you know what you can actually get out to as well but I've mm-hmm. actually just come back from from Robin Hood's base you know we've been in Whitby a few mm-hmm. weeks ago and we were actually staying in Robin Hood's base so I managed to squeeze half an hour to go down to uh to the seafront and actually take some shots looking back up at the village and then also a few of the landscapes out there and it is beautiful it is absolutely mm-hmm. stunning Jean. and you know for, as you say getting sunrises if you can get up uh, mm-hmm. for the right time and, and kind of head down the hill it is phenomenal and we've actually got a guide about shooting uh sunrises and sunsets and eye photography so if you want to have a read over that before mm-hmm. you go along then it may give you yes. a few extra tips yeah. but yeah. certainly fil- filters are going to be very very important in those instances instances uh graduated mm-hmm. filters be very very good to help uh just kind of blend out a, a little bit of the sky and make sure your exposure is balanced with the uh the, the floor the foreground as well um but but i mean with all that said i know you've said you know you're not necessarily kind of reaching always the images that you want to reach but mm-hmm. we've seen you and you know again I'll, I'll put some of these images up on the the video version of the podcast but I'm just looking across at my other screen now and we've got so many of your lovely photographs that I can see here that, you know, for someone that, that feels they're not achieving necessarily the direction that they want to go in, what you are achieving is, is absolutely five star. And I, and I think that's another kind of interesting thing that some photographers, this is not even just yourself, that they don't uh, maybe kind of fully appreciate what they have, you know, the, the, the knowledge and the skills that they have got and also the ability that they have got, because I know we, even in eye photography that you've won like picture of the day awards, um, et cetera. And I'm sure you've been kind of shortlisted in many of the competitions that we've done. Um, so it really shows, you know, it's a great showcase of a very, very competent photographer, but I mean, do you ever look back on your own images? Uh, you know, are you quite critical with them or, you know, how do you actually assess what you've done so far? Do you actually believe you've got some, you've taken some really good images? Well, thank you for what you said in first, but um 
yes, I, I, I do. I am quite, I'm, I am pleased with some of my images. And I think that, um, that what I try to do is to, is to look for progress. I can remember you saying once that about um, this thing about walking up a staircase and not looking at, 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 up at where you've got to go, but looking back from where you've come. And I try to do that. And I try to, um, to, to have a look back and think, well, this is so much better and, and, and be quite proud of this. Mm -hmm. But still, I have that thing about, you know, wanting to really um, sort of to really crack the shot, to tell the story mm -hmm. um, or and I don't always feel I achieve it. And I think that I, I do try to look very, very critically at, at my work. And, and this is something I've really learned on our photography. And I hope I will never put a wonky landscape on the gallery again or <laughs> something with untidy corners, which is another one. And I absolutely love that, that term that you often use, like, you know, this is a nice, clean image. And I always look at things and think, is this clean? And, you know, what exactly does clean mean? And is this it? Um, so I, I um, but I do think that I can be too self-critical and have too high expectations of myself and have be too um, ambitious about where I can, where I can go. Um, so I think that is, is something I need to manage. Yeah. I think yeah, I need yeah. to manage my expectations of myself. Um, but I think, I think you're probably going to go on to talk about the, uh, the pandemic, but I think that, um I find it more difficult to manage that because photography has become so much to me I think in the last the last year 18 months mm -hmm. yeah I know I, I know I understand and you, you're right it's I think everyone's got to manage expectations to a degree that, that there's images that I would love to take that you know maybe require going abroad etc but that's just not in my future at the minute and it's not something mm -hmm. I'd you know I, I I'm going to say you know it's definitely going to happen, but I think I can try and do the best job that I can possibly do on the location where I am at the time with the equipment. And that's all I can ever ask of myself. Yeah. And I, and I feel that everybody should kind of, I say everyone should take a similar approach, but you should at least kind of, um, um, you know, look back on your work and positively, especially for yourself, mm -hmm. as you say, you know, it's basically, like you said, walking up those stairs, but backwards. So you're only ever looking at, at what you've done previously and making sure that the next version that you do is that little bit better or a bit more interesting, or it's a bit, a bit more yes. story by it. Mm -hmm. And then that's how we learn. We're not going to jump into those amazing, you could say top grade shots straight away. Mm -hmm. But what you have taken are still some fantastic photographs. And, Thank you. you know, for, for someone who isn't full time, you know, that you're not doing this as a business, as you say, this is, this is a hobby to you. Um, I think there'd be many professional photographers that would dream to have some of the images that you've taken because the idea of being professional or non-professional is, as I think we talked about a little while ago in the iPhotography plus Facebook group, it's all down to money, you know, and, and that's got nothing to do with skill or anything else really as well. It, it's just solely down to your income. So yeah, whether you're a professional photographer in inverted commas or not, it has no bearing on your actual uh, photographs themselves. So I think what you have taken, it's something you should be, should be mega, mega proud of Jean as well, because it's, it's lovely that you are so passionate and you're right, you know, managing those expectations as to what you can physically do, you know, mm. what, what your life and your, uh, you know, your lifestyle, et cetera, allows you to do. I think you've done a marvelous job of it. I mean, you have, you've managed to get out to a lot of uh, locations. I mean, despite um, uh, COVID, et cetera, I don't know how, how often some of these, how, how, when you actually took some of these images, I'm looking at the ones of like the Angel of the North uh, and then the other ones of Bamber Beach. Um, so were they oh, yeah. taken this year or last year? Yeah, yes, we, um, we, the very first three, um, th two nights that you could actually stay in a hotel. This was what I can't remember, sort of back in April. Yeah, and uh, we, we actually went, we, we were able to go to uh, Bamber and stay for two nights. Um, oh, yeah, and, and I did take a lot of photographs. <laughs> absolutely loved it up there. But I think that that's a very good point there. You're restricted from it so much from your wonderful landscapes that as soon yeah. as someone says you can go out, you yes, go crazy it, with it because you've, yeah. you've missed it and you're almost making up for lost time, which yeah. I totally Yeah, that's that. right. You're there um, like a shot. Yeah. yeah, I mean, well, we, you were talking about the pandemic just before, and I, and I, it's, I think it's a good point to come on to because it's been a very tormenting year, you know, for, mm -hmm. for everybody, and you're not just yeah. creative people, but, you know, how did, you know, given that you do love landscapes, um, 
you know, I noticed that your photography changed, you know, it, it adapted really, really nicely to doing a lot of uh, indoor projects, etc. But, you know, how, how did you see it? How did you change your in uh, your kind of outlook on photography to make sure that you were still being creative uh, and, and the camera wasn't gathering dust, so to speak? Well, I think, I think the whole thing about the pandemic, I think it was, I, uh, my experience has been quite different, I think, to other people's experience as regards photography. Because whereas some people, um, I know if you've been a, um, somebody who was doing a lot of photography before, then you would feel sort of stilted with it. I was the opposite way around because I hadn't been doing that much photography before. And it was um, it was really because of the pandemic that I started to, um, that, that I joined um, plus the plus group mm -hmm. because it was um, again it was down to Tony actually down to, down to my husband who um, it was incredible really because he'd been um, he'd been diagnosed diagnosed with prostate cancer in October of the of, of 2019 and during that winter we um, he was having treatment that was preparing him to have a, an extended period of radiotherapy mm -hmm. And I think he got this very, very much in mind when one morning we we're just having a cup of coffee and I said to him, I keep getting these emails from iPhotography. We're starting this new group, a plus group, and you get this, this, that, and the other. And I, I'm just wondering whether I should join. He said, do it. <laughs> and I said, yeah, yeah, I think I, I think I will. He said, no, I mean, do it. Absolutely do it. And said, in fact, go now, put the computer on and do it right now. Oh, bless him. And and I did, and I think, and, and he clearly knew that, we knew that um, something was bubbling regarding, at that point, that something was bubbling regarding um, COVID. Yeah. And we knew that our life was going to narrow down while he was having to have this treatment. And he, he recognised that what I needed was a project. Yeah. I'm a bit like that, I always need a project. And, uh, and he, he saw photography as being it. And so I really just started then, so... I did realise quite quickly it wasn't going to be the landscapes. Um, <laughs> so I um, I started doing the still lives, which I absolutely loved. Absolutely. Um, I had such good fun. Yeah. So I got myself set up in a little room here. And, um, you know, my son actually, um, brilliant, had this computer that I'm talking to you on now built with, um, with uh, Photoshop in mind by a colleague. And... Um, and so I'm all set up here. I've got my little light, my light tent, and I, I just had such fun doing all that. But of course, then I ran out of things to photograph. <laughs> borrowed stuff from my daughter, borrowed stuff from a friend, and um, and then we were locked down and shielding, so I couldn't really gather any yeah. any more stuff. So that sort of petered out a little bit. Oh, that's great. It's interesting that you kind of you kind of you know pre-saw it in a way and you prepared yourself and set up. That that was really nice because I, you know, I as much as we saw things coming on the horizon as a business, but no, I don't know if anybody expected it to have lasted as long as it had. Um, yeah. and you know, to be yeah. as severe as it had. But yeah. it's it's great as you say that you know you've adapted, you've done something different from your your, your kind of your previous landscapes, and you've got so many really, really good pictures. And I think, you know, how, have you found that it's um it's taught you things about lighting you know because you're working at oh, things on a much more smaller level there what's it taught yeah. you oh it's, it's it taught me massively about lighting and it's I, I struggle with the technical things which I think you probably know I um I find it difficult to learn things um quickly now mm -hmm. I do learn but I learn slowly so things like um the exposure triangle you know completely befuddled me for a, quite a long time and what I was able to do um obviously sitting here uh, with my tripod and everything, I could just play around with it for hours. So it's not like being out doing a landscape and somebody's waiting for you, or you might think the weather might change and and all of that. I could just sit here trying different settings, different lighting situations. I've got all sorts of little lamps and torches and various things. So it taught me so much about the camera. I still don't know. I, I still don't think I'm good enough with the the lighting and the actual. My fluency with the camera, I think, needs to be uh, improved. Mm -hmm. But it did. Doing the still life ones taught me a huge amount. And, of course, editing. Yeah. Um, that oh, yeah. Is some, which is something else I, I absolutely love doing. Oh, you've got so many cool shots. I mean, the, your very, very recent one, um, I'm just flicking back to it, um, you were taken in Sheffield. Um, remind me again of the 
building it was one that's that's caught a lot of attention um oh recently it's the last couple of weeks the theaters that's the one the theater yeah. yes yeah sorry there we go it's yeah the mm -hmm. theater. that that's it's really interesting because it just doesn't look like a photograph at all um and if anyone's listening to this as a podcast you're gonna have to go and watch the youtube video just to see <laughs> this photograph to make sense of it all but it's fun it's, it's amazing I, I think you know you you'd be sending those images off um to the crucible um for them you know just to actually have a look at it as well because I, I think they they'd love that on their social media feeds you know and even if they wanted to use it in marketing as well you could sell it to them or license it um but it, it shows again as you say that your skills have adapted you know you've spent more time indoors you spent on like indoor projects but then also in time in editing so by the time that now you come out a little bit more if you're going back to your landscapes you're you're even better informed now about how to kind of uh, you know how to look at light or how to control your editing so it's it's really pleasing that you've not just kind of shut up shop and, and just kind of you know separated yourself from the outside world as i'm sure many people have done um but you kept your mind going because i don't know is, it, is that motivation that you've always had that you've always needed to have a project you always need to be on the go yes yes i'm famous for it in the family yeah <laughs> Jean's got a project she'll, she's all right yeah keep you busy <laughs> well I mean looking looking forward to I suppose uh, you know a brighter future with things starting to open up a little bit more and as you say you're able to get out a little bit more somewhat I mean do you have any other projects on the horizon is there anything any places that you're looking to go to with your camera anything else you wanting to test yourself on yes I um I also like I I think this is probably one of my problems about finding something that I can really develop as being my own style because I like so many different things yeah. um you know I like to be a bit of a Jill of all trades and um and I, I love urban photography I love architecture and I really want to do more of that and that's been a bit tricky to actually be able to to get to various cities but I'm, I'm becoming really fascinated as well. I mean, apart from photography with the um, with city centres and um, and the high street and the changes in the high street, mm. I think are phenomenal. And um, I really want to try and document that. I had a, I've had a couple of goes at it and not not managed to tell the story, yeah. but I really. I really would like to find a way of telling that story about the um, the way because we're finding in Sheffield that all of the department stores that um, I grew up with they're all going. Um, Sheffield's lost its John Lewis to you know everybody is horrified by the fact that we no longer have a John Lewis, um, and um, because you know where we all used to shop for everything, and. Um, and, and I think and there are lots of places springing up, some really nice, bright, shiny, you know, places um, for young people. And I think that the high street is going to be um, become a lot more about bars and restaurants and and um, cocktail bars and, th you know, things yeah. like that. But what I'm seeing is, is these images and also the old buildings that are either being refurbished and lots of places to let and loads and loads of scaffolding. So it's my idea to try to put that somehow together in some kind of an image that, um, so I'd like to do more cities yeah. to, to Salford and to Manchester. And, there, um, yeah, I think you find, especially in the north of England, there is a lot of regeneration that, that's going on. Manchester certainly is one, you know, it's yes. experienced a lot with, um, yeah. with the changes, as you say, in Salford, where the BBC have now moved to, but even over in Leeds as well. I know with the development of the, uh, HS2 the train line I know it's not up to to that degree yet but yes. that again I think is there to promote a change that the, the north of England is to undergo that regeneration so I think it's a, a very timely project most definitely yeah. and you'll have to kind of uh, keep us updated on, on how it's going mm -hmm. um, because they say it, it's street photography uh, or urban landscapes it's, it's a place that you could always revisit constantly because you could never take the same shot twice really as you say there's yeah. always something going on um, but if you want a little bit of help I know as an iPhone photography plus member i think one of our most recent skill track videos um it may be coming out for you soon or maybe in a couple of months depending upon when you joined um but that's about urban landscapes right. um so the, there's something kind of it hopefully kind of helpful from there that we filmed uh, maybe last year down in london um mm -hmm. so fingers crossed it may give you a little bit of either inspiration or, or ideas with that on, uh, yes. anyway but um but one of our last questions Jean, just before i kind of uh, i let you go um is our uh, regular time travel question like i kind of call it so it's something you've, you've probably heard that we've asked everybody that kind of taking yourself back to um, you know the early 90s when you first kind of picked up that that camera that uh canon power shop 
if you could give yourself, uh, you know, your younger self, a bit of uh, a bit of advice, a golden nugget of information, if you could trans- transport yourself back in time, what would you say to yourself to try and make photography uh, a little bit easier or a little bit more enjoyable? Well, I picked up the box and when I can't, I don't remember buying the power shot, but when I picked it up, I would have said to myself, put it back, buy yourself a DSLR and start on your journey earlier. Because uh, towards being a photographer, it would have given me another 30 years, wouldn't it? Uh, and um, and also, um, you know, even when I got my DSLR and I stuck on on um, automatic for all those years, I needed to um, I needed to actually start earlier. That's what I would say. Don't mess yeah. about. Get on with it. Start now. So if you're if you're considering it, then yeah, don't don't wait. But with that said, given what you have achieved so much, even just with eye photography over the you know the, the years that you've been with us, um, it's something that I can actually see, you know, in terms of your your progress is fantastic. So you know you've achieved a lot in in a, in a short space of time anyway. But yeah, I, I suppose it's the beauty of high insight, isn't it? You can always look back and say, oh, "Wish I'd done that," and "Wish I'd done that." But what you have achieved so far um, is fantastic, and there's there's many many more years of it to come as well. So I I thank you for that, Jean, and. It's it's been an absolute pleasure kind of talking to you and, and hopefully you know when you've got your uh, your city project underway a little bit more maybe we can come back and we'll we can do like another assessment and see how you're getting on with it Absolutely. yeah I'll, I'll that'll spur me on Stephen. thank you <laughs> you're very welcome <laughs> well gene thank you very very much anyway for thank coming you. onto the podcast today so hopefully we'll, we'll catch up and do this again anyway uh, but thank you so much for your time anyway my pleasure